Welcome to Shamba Shape Up. This year we are celebrating the 10th anniversary of your favorite TV show. Once again, we have traveled all over East Africa to find hard-working farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the knowledge they need. So they can adapt and make their farms more productive even while the climate changes. We support them to become more productive, get better yields, and increase their income. We meet families and enter their kitchens to explore what we eat, where we get it, and how we can cook it in cleaner, faster, healthier, and cheaper ways. And at the same time, increase family nutrition. We will see how farmers from across the region can benefit from our experts' advice. While also learn from each other in so many ways. Join us on these journeys and share in the farmers' experiences as they shape up their shambas. Welcome to the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Welcome to Shamba Shape Up. Today we are in Bungoma County next to Magnificent Nabuyole Falls. It is a wonderful sight. And it reminds us of how wonderful our farmers are. Why? Because they are loud and noisy? No, Tony, because they are strong and proud. That's right. And you're going to prove that. Not with one, but with two excellent farmers. Let's go, Tony. Let's go meet them. Dear viewers, I'd like to let you know that all the filming you're about to see was done before the outbreak of the coronavirus in Kenya and Tanzania. Today we are visiting Harrison and Kennedy. These are two brothers who are managing the farm for their parents, Daniel Lusaka and Amelia Naima. Hello! Ah, hello! hello. Yeah. Harrison, hey, how are you? Oh, good to see you. Ah, good, to you. Ah, you. good, good. We are happy to be here. Well, we, we are, are doing well. We are happy Karibu. to be here. Yes. 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 So Harrison yes. and... Uh, Ken? Ken? Ken yeah. is Harrison. I'm Ken. Ah, uh -huh. good. Yes. Yes. Show us your shamba. Thank yes. you. All right. Let's go. We'll go. Right. see you later. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, our farmers grow Bracaria grass. And they have hungry cows too. Perfect. These trees look amazing. And green sukumawiki for the kitchen? Delicious. There are chickens. And ducks too. Wow, Harrison and Ken. Oh. That's a very well managed shamba. Thank you. Beautiful. Very beautiful. Oh, yes. Thank you. Uh, we know in any farm, yes. when you're going through your re regular routine, you yes. must have maybe uh, faced problems here and there. Yeah. I don't want to call them problems. Uh -huh. They're called Challenge. challenges. challenges. <laughs> Good. Good, that's the word I was looking for. Okay. So have you faced any of those? Yes, challenges are there. One, um, we have a dry spell, like remember the last year. Mm -hmm. We experienced a long duration of the dry season. Mm -hmm. We lost so many trees on mm -hmm. the farm. Mm -hmm. Out of 200 uh, pieces, we lost around 50. So that's we had to lot. sell them at a throwaway price. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you see, as a farmer, the most important thing is to make an income. Mm -hmm. Out of it. So yeah. you need ways on how you can manage your trees. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How about your cows? How is the milk production? Up and down. Mm -hmm. Sometimes 20 liters per animal, mm -hmm. sometimes 25, mm -hmm. sometimes 18. Mm -hmm. And we want to increase that uh, production. Wow. Like that okay. liters per day. Uh -huh. That's good. Yeah. That's nice. good. We have experts who are going to make sure that you're fully shaped up. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, right. We have a surprise for mom. In the meantime, we need to get to work because we have a lot to do Thank in you. a short period of time. All right. We'll you. see you later. We'll see you later. Right? Right? Okay. 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 All right. Thank you. <laughs> well, it's time to pitch the tent. And get ready for work. Our first expert today is Samuel Muema from Agrifor. He's come to give Kennedy some advice on looking after trees. Kennedy has over 250 on his farm. Trees can be a very profitable business if they are planted properly from the beginning and properly looked after right through to harvesting. And here is our farmer, Kennedy. Kennedy, meet Samuel. So Ken, why, why do you plant trees? These trees, they act as like a saving. What do you mean by that? Like you see this tree, I bought at five shillings. Five shillings. Yes, uh -huh. and now it's two years. How much do you think I can fetch? Tell me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the current price is going around 200 shillings. Uh -huh. This size. The uh -huh. small ones. Yeah, these small ones. Uh -huh. All right. 200 shillings. So to me, that's a saving. But so if this is two years, is it ready for sale? I'm giving Pans? it uh, five years. Another five years. Yes. So, Samuel, yeah. where do you want to start? 
I think we start from the spacing element, mm -hmm. uh, which I've seen that uh, they have gotten wrong. Mm -hmm. They're somewhere this here. Way. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. The right spacing mm -hmm. gives the right stocking. By stocking, what do you mean? The number of trees that you have mm -hmm. in a given uh, area. All right. And for eucalyptuses, mm -hmm. there are certain uh, stocking rates mm -hmm. that we are looking at. Mm -hmm. Like when you look at this, you can clearly see this we are initially properly spaced, uh -huh. despite this one that was put in the middle. So this one is the intruder. <laughs> this should be removed. To easily spot unwanted seedlings, plant in rows. For commercial planting, each row should be at least 2.5 meters apart with 2.5 meters between each seedling. Then make sure you weed out any small trees that grow in between the larger trees. Correct spacing is very important. But how do farmers avoid having trees of different ages? If you want to plant the trees, a given uh, batch or a given edge should be planted at the same time. Okay. You can demarcate your land into mm. various blocks. Mm. You say this block, I am going to plant this year. Mm -hmm. and then another particular... block, mm -hmm. another year, and that way. So each block has a given edge. But also when it comes to the future operation like harvesting, mm. if they have different edges, if you fell this big one, mm -hmm. it will break the small one. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And there will be a lot of uh, chaos mm -hmm. even during harvest. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, when planting trees, always keep them in blocks of the same age. For example, the first block is planted in year one, the second block in year two, the third block in year three, and so on and so forth. Mixing trees of different ages makes felling very difficult and can result in damaging the younger trees. But is there anything Kennedy can do now that he already has trees of different ages side by side? We have a practice that we use in mm. commercial forestry. Mm. We call it thinning. Mm. Thinning? Yes. Right. You should do selective thinning mm -hmm. and they remove these small ones. From the third year, you can start thinning. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. What else did you observe? I observed that they planted mixed species. Oh, mixed species. Yes. That's all seeing different leaves. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And other trees from other families. Okay. You can see these are uh, eucalyptus. Yes. And these grevillea. Ah. Yeah. These are totally different. They are Ken. totally mm -hmm. different. Mm -hmm. The management aspects of the trees are different. Mm -hmm. How you manage uh, eucalyptus is not how you manage a plantation of grevillea. Mm -hmm. That mixing up would be problematic when it comes to other operations like the thinning mm -hmm. and the harvesting. Mm -hmm. Yes, and also the pest and the diseases are different. Mm -hmm. You might find Grevaria is a host of a pest mm -hmm. which is not harmful to itself, mm -hmm. but it's harmful to the eucalyptus. Mm -hmm. So, never mix species of trees in the same area. Keep them separate. A big advantage is the reduction in the spread of diseases. Thank you very much, Samuel. You're welcome. And Ken, thank you for giving us your forest. Oh, really? Thank and you. the rain, we cannot even begin to explain. Yes. So, thank you very much. Thank you. And to our farmers at home, just a few pointers. Always make sure you buy your seedlings from renowned sellers. When planting, make sure your spacing is right. Number three, always when planting, make sure you plant the same species at a particular place at a particular time. Yeah, so that you make sure you get maximum produce from your trees. Our next job is to help Harrison with his cows. He's feeding them fodder he grows in a field nearby. But there's a problem with the grass. So we've stopped by the field to take a look. Ken, which fodder is it? This is Bracaria grass. And uh, Bracaria grass is good in crude protein. Bracaria grass has 18% crude protein compared to Napier grass, which is 7%, or uh, Bomaros, which can go up to 10% crude protein. And number two, this is a drought-tolerant grass. Wow. So it does well even uh, during the dry spell. So Harrison, I can see your crop is looking a bit yellow in some places. Mm. It should be all green. should be green, but we have just seen uh, it's just drying. No one seems to know what's wrong. So I think this is a job for Aishamba. I'm going to send them pictures. Let's see if they can tell us what to do. And one for you. Ah, good. Right, sir. Let's go see your cows. Sir, let's go. As we wait for Aishamba to reply, let's go and see the cows and find out what our expert Kennedy Langat from Cooper's thinks. We have seen that fodder is very important for cows. What else is important? For a successful dairy farm, you need to look at two things. 
The first one is the genetics and the second one is nutrition. Mm -hmm. The genetics plays about 30% of it. Nutrition plays about 70%. Let's touch a bit on genetics. When you, when you say genetics, what do you mean? We need cows that are pedigree. Pedigree means cows that are, have that genetic potential to give you milk. If you feed your cow and it doesn't have that genetic potential to give you milk, you'll be wasting time. Our farmer has been proving his cow's genetics by using AI and selecting bull semen from Cooper's CRV catalog. AI lets you choose the right bulls to improve your herd. In only six generations, you can get a pedigree, high-value herd using good AI. So far, so good. Once you have the good genetics, now you need to give it good feed, good quality feed for high nutrition. Number two, feeds that are not, are not contaminated. So what type of feed do you feed your cows? We are feeding uh, bracharia green. Mm -hmm. and uh, silage yes yeah and, and hey how about supplements which supplements are you using so let me show you mm -hmm. ah look at this it's got your products yes is this good yeah these are good products mm -hmm. uh, for one maclic super will guarantee you more milk production you only need to feed 200 grams per cow per day and you realize the milk so, feed your cows 200 grams or 8 spoons of Maklik Super per cow per day. It's also a good idea to hang a Maklik brick for added minerals. The other uh, product that you're using which is good is Diamond V. So, Diamond V plays a critical role in terms of uh, maximizing feed efficiency. Mm -hmm. The combination of these two products will guarantee you more milk. And how, how do you find uh, these products? This product, like uh, Maclex Super, when you use it, it produces. You how how much milk were you getting before you are using? It? Like uh, eighteen liters per day. Mm -hmm. Like when when you use this the, this uh, Maclex Super, mm -hmm. unless you increase like twenty three. Ah. Uh, yeah. This is great. Our farmer is doing really well. Good genetics, good fodder, and a great choice of supplements for increasing milk yield. But is there anything else he should worry about? We also have issues of mycotoxins and you need to cover your animals from mycotoxins. When you harvest your fodder and store it in the store, it tends to develop moles. Yes. And those moles are the mycotoxins we are talking about. Mm. Those mycotoxins are harmful to us mm. and to the animals. And we have a good product that is double powered. T5Z is a product that is both preventive and mm. curative. It is preventive from what? Once the cow consumes fodder that is contaminated with mycotoxins, mm. T5Z will prevent it from getting into the system of the cow. Number two, however how much you prevent, there are small trace elements that will get into the system. And this one will cure. The difference between T5Z and other mycotoxins in the market is this one is both preventive and curative. How does a farmer use T5Z? If you're mixing your feed, we normally say 100 grams for 100 kilos of feed. Using T5Z, our farmer can get rid of harmful toxins such as aflatoxin in his fodder that not only damage the cows, but are also harmful to people who drink the cow's milk. Use 100 grams of T5Z in every 100 kilograms of feed. So you need to be weighing your feeds so that you include a good ratio of T5Z. Ah! That is awesome. Yeah. Meanwhile, I've got a phone call. Wow, this is Aishamba. This is a result of uh, the disease we saw in your uh, folder uh -huh. as we were coming in. You remember what we saw? Yes. They are saying is uh, rhizocotnia disease. Yeah, it's because there's poor drainage and uh, there's thick layers of leaves that you've left there, mm -hmm. which are wet, which I think you need to remove. And you apply fungicide. Thank you so much, Ken. Huh, yeah. Tony, so far, what do you think? Carol, let me tell you, I have seen some beautiful cows. Yeah, yeah, I'm Tony, telling Tony, you Tony, that they are... It, it's okay, uh, they're yeah? just cows. Wow. They're cows, wow. Yes. Well done, cows. Yes. Oh, look at them, oh my God. I'm... Cows. Anyway, anyway, coming up after the break... Cooking fast and cooking cheap. And what to do to avoid a major disaster. Welcome back to Shamba Shepa. We are in Bungoma and we are visiting brothers Harrison and Kennedy. 
We've seen how to manage trees and look after your cows. But we also want to find out about cooking without wood or charcoal. And what to do if a major disaster strikes. No time to waste, Tony. Let's get to work. Let's get back to work. I'm going back to the cows. While Tony is obsessing about the cows, I'm going to see what Mama is cooking in the kitchen. I see she has a charcoal jiko. Now, I think there's a much better way to cook for the family. A solution which saves time, saves money, and doesn't damage your health. Ah, uh, what are you making? I'm making sweet potatoes. How long will it take? Some two hours, it will be ready. What? Two hours? Yes. So this is the only stove that you use for cooking? This is the only one I have. And with this weather, mm -hmm. it takes long to light. Mm -hmm. You have to look for papers around, dry twigs. Mm -hmm. Before it gets light, it's tedious. Mm -hmm. It is very smoky and asthmatic. I'm sorry about that. But you know, at the end of the day, food has to be cooked. You have to put food on the table. That means you spend a lot of money. A lot of money, How especially with this weather. Mm -hmm. Charcoal is very expensive. How would you feel if we got you something better? I'll be appreciative, my daughter. I'll appreciate. Yes, Tony. ready. Ready, Carol. Ah, there it's we time. go. It's time. Voila. Ah. Mom, enjoy. Ah, thank you so is much, Tony. Is this mine? Yes. My goodness. Totally yours. My problem is solved. Now let's get it. Out. This is great. This is an electric pressure cooker. Ooh. It cooks anything you want. Mm -hmm. What do you like cooking? I cook rice. Mm -hmm. I cook ndengu. Mm -hmm. I cook gideri. Gideri? Name them all. And how long does gideri take, for example? Gideri takes even longer than sweet potatoes. Yes. Like so three hours. Three, four hours. Yes. Can you imagine this? We make your gideri in about 30 minutes. My Isn't problems that good? are solved, my dear daughter. Yes. Oh. It can make rice. Yes. It can make porridge. Yes. It can make beans. Hey. And you'll not waste any more time. Amen. And I know maybe you're asking, how does it work? That is the question. We've made it easy for you. We've made this video mm. as a referral. Yes. Anytime you have a question, anytime you're stuck, anytime you need a referral, you just click in. To it. And you look at it. Yes. Let's see how it works. Let's hear from Agnes Kalonje also known as Jikoni Magic on social media to learn more about how the electric pressure cooker works. Today I want to present to you the electric pressure cooker. I highly recommend it for anyone who's looking to cook efficiently. It's very, very safe to have it. It won't open once it comes to pressure. If it falls down, it will not pop open. So it will not end up scalding whoever is handling it. The advantages of having a pressure cooker in your house is it cooks fast because foods that take three hours or more when you cook over charcoal or over firewood will take on average between 40 minutes to one hour. Then when it comes to your health, when you use firewood, you run the risk of having upper respiratory complications because of the fumes that are coming from the fuels that you're using. This electric pressure cooker uses electricity, which is a clean source of fuel. And then finally, when we talk of being efficient cost-wise, it means that the energy consumption is very low because after this pressure cooker comes to pressure, it will draw very little electricity because it's going to rely on the pressure that's inside and the insulation to retain the heat inside. And let's not forget, the food tastes great as well. Delicious! So, this electric pressure cooker could save over 90% of your cooking costs and 75% of the time it normally takes to cook. It doesn't give off harmful fumes. It doesn't even release cooking smells. What's not to like? You see? Yes. When you have this pressure cooker in your home, yes. one, you save time. That means you can be able to do other things in the shamba. Two, your health. You're talking about asthma. No more smoke. We say smoke, gone. gone. Mm -hmm. Another thing, which is very important, you save money. I thank God for all this. Mm -hmm. Shem Shape Up is the Company to belong to. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for our final expert of the day. 
As any farmer, I'm sure will agree, unexpected losses on the farm are one of the biggest problems farmers face. The death of a cow can be a very serious loss. Even diseases and pests can seriously reduce income by affecting milk yield. And crops too are vulnerable. A lack of rain, too much rain, pests and diseases. All these and many more problems can impact the harvest and reduce income. But fortunately, help is at hand. Our expert Joseph Chege is here to tell us about insurance and how by paying a small amount of money every month, a farmer can be compensated for serious losses should they arise. Wow. <coughs> okay, Joseph, yes. you've yes. seen for yourself. Yes. We've been checking around. We've seen the cows and you've seen the maize. They are busy farmers. Now, yes. unfortunately, some time back they had a tragedy. What, what, what happened exactly, Ken? We had um, a strange disease eh? mm. called um, lumpy skin. Mm. Having called the vets, yes. but they couldn't mm -hmm. save them. Mm. Oh, it was too late. It was too late. Yeah. Yes. And it was a huge loss, wasn't it? Losing two animals huh. of great value. Wow. To a farmer is uh, a blow. <laughs> oh my, oh my, that was a huge tragedy, wasn't mm. it, Joseph? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Surviving losses like this is the reason why we have our insurance expert here. But first, I wanted to know, what kind of losses does an insurance policy cover? Diseases are covered. Mm -hmm. So in case you lose your animals due to, say, diseases like what you mentioned, like lumpy skin disease, mm. it's a very common disease that happens here and causes huge losses to uh, dairy farmers. Mm. So accidents, uh, your animal can swallow, you know, like metallic material, mm. and that happens eh, quite a lot mm. and inflict injur uh, injuries internally. So your animal eventually will die mm -hmm. and such kind of losses are also covered. Okay. We also have theft, um, some, you know, these can come into your, uh, to your premises and then break into mm -hmm. and, um, you know, steal your animals. If that happens again, you'll also be covered. And uh, climate change is a reality mm -hmm. and it is affecting farmers. We are receiving rainfall before the ordinary dates that we are used to. Mm -hmm. Or we experience like depressed trains. With that unpredictable weather pattern, it's important to make sure that you have insurance. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the risks that are covered. Mm -hmm. okay. And the same thing applies to crops. Yeah, the same case applies to crops, but now mm. for crops, the cover period doesn't run for one year. Mm. It covers you for the production period. Mm -hmm. mm, yeah. That is good. And it is very cheap, Tony. If you look at the cost of insurance for dairy animals like Ken and Harrison, I can see they are high value animals, over 100,000 Kenya shillings. Mm. The cost of insurance would be like 3,500. And if you calculate that very well, it's like 10 shillings per day. Let us recap those figures. If you have a dairy cow that is valued at 100,000 shillings, then the cost of insurance will be around 3.5% of that value. So that works out at a premium of about 3,500 shillings per year, or just 10 shillings a day. Not bad. It is better you have that coverage and you will not have a sleepless night. Mm -hmm. okay. Now our expert is here mm -hmm. and I'm sure you're burning with a question. Maybe you had insured your crops against risk A, risk B, yes. risk C, yes. but you didn't take into consideration mm. the army one mm -hmm. or the locust. Mm. How will you help that? Insurance protects you for what you cannot prevent. So that's an unforeseen risk. No farmer anticipated that will be an outbreak of locusts. Mm -hmm. So if that happens and you have an insurance product, then you're covered. Insurance doesn't cover you for what you can see or what you anticipate is likely to happen. The main purpose of having an insurance product is simply to cover you for what you cannot prevent. So like um, uh, those are outbreaks you're talking about, locusts, fall armyworm. It's a risk called uncontrollable pest and diseases. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What process should a farmer do to start insuring their crops or their animals? Basically, uh, when you want to buy um, livestock insurance or dairy insurance, you can either go to an insurance company or you can go to an agent. You fill the proposal form first. Once you do that, you submit it to an insurance company through an agent. Yes. Then uh, the insurance company will send a vet doctor or they can uh, ask you to identify a vet doctor yes. uh, who operates in, in, in your locality. Yes. So he'll come and assess your animals whether they are 
they are disease free, mm -hmm. uh, the housekeeping status, how are you managing your animals, and then he can certify you for insurance. Mm -hmm. A vet comes to certify you before you get cover. Mm -hmm. Then uh, you pay premium, uh, that is the amount of um, money uh, that you use to purchase this insurance uh, product. Yes. So once you pay that, then you get a full year cover. So, to get an insurance, one, contact an insurance representative. Two, a vet will come and assess your cows. Three, the insurance company will quote a cost. Four, you pay the premium and you are insured. That's okay, true. you dash to the office and prepare the paperwork. We'll call you when we are ready. Let me do that. Okay, Joseph. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Nice seeing you again. Thank you, Thank you, thank you so much, Harrison. Okay. So, guys, yes. did you enjoy the shape up? How really? is the going, ah, here is Tony? <laughs> good, good. You this just is my seat. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, how is the going? I was oh, just bad. asking them how they yes. found the shape up. What made you so happy mm -hmm. about our visit here? Ken. Mm. Oh, the cows. Ah, very happy. Because you are a happy cow farmer. Yeah. So Ken, yes. you're a busy man. Yes. How do you feel if you can make your food in the shortest time possible? They say time is money. Yes. Yes. So now mom can make your food very fast. Very fast? Yes. And you can go back to work? Very fast. That would be nice. Yes. yes. Yeah, Harrison, is that a good thing? Yeah. Well, Caro. Our work here is done. And so, we'll see you in the next... Shamba! Shamba!